Good evening, everyone. How are you guys? Welcome to Thursday evening. You guys are here live on the Dixie Bell Paint Facebook page with Brush by Brandy. Um, my name is Brandy. I'm the owner and artisan behind Brush by Brandy. I'm also a Dixie Bell Paint brand ambassador. And so I'm here tonight because we're going to do a faux finish together. I'm kind of experimenting, so I'm really hoping it works since we're live on camera. You guys are going to experiment with me. Hang on, so if it's a faux finish, does that mean it's a pretend finish? Yes, it's okay. just pretend. I'm just checking. We're just going to imagine that I finished this dresser <laughs> right here. You guys, my husband Sean is here. If you have any questions, please come on in um, and let me know. We'll answer your questions as we go. So the first thing I want to do is I want to show you kind of what I started with on these pieces here. So I know on camera it probably doesn't translate, but this is the piece I'm working on. And these are little Bombay chests that I love. Um, I've done these pieces before, um, and I love the shape of them, but let me show you guys what it looked like when I first got it. I think we can see this. Yeah, are you sure? Yeah, I'm it's pretty sure. It's kind of understated, so I don't know if you can see that. You guys, this is a pre-painted piece. Somebody finished these Bombay chests in this finish right here on purpose. Finish? Yeah, um, these are all hand-painted flowers. But can you come in closer? Because I want to show like what this paint texture looks like on here. It looks like they put it on. It's latex paint, and it looks like they put it on with a roller. It's got so much yeah, got the texture peel in and the there. paint. Um. So the reason I'm doing the finish I'm doing tonight is because what do you do here? The top has all the orange peely texture too. What do you do when you're painting over an existing finish that's got a lot of texture in it? I'm going to cover their bad texture with some good texture. Good texture! <laughs> so I'm actually going to give this piece um, a textured finish and that's going to hide the fact that it's got this horrible paint finish underneath it. Um, now when I'm painting over an existing finish, the things I look for are, number one, can I tell what kind of paint they used? This is a latex paint. Um, I can tell by the feel of it. You can usually tell if they use a chalk-based paint. If it's an old finish and it's lead-based paint, you don't want to touch that. But this is definitely a latex paint. Um, you don't want to sand a latex paint finish because it will start peeling. That's one of the reasons latex paint isn't ideal for painting furniture. If you go to distress it or scratch it or anything, the paint will want to peel away. So I didn't want to sand that this textured this whatever this is here i didn't want to sand it so if i was going to paint <laughs> yeah that, that's what is, it would look like this is mine is the flowers I yeah i hope that person doesn't watch my videos but um no there's a lot of time went into that piece um so i don't i know that i don't want to sand this down because then i will encourage that existing paint finish to peel so the things i look for can i tell what kind of paint is on there is it in reasonably good condition it's not chipping it's not peeling um, it's pretty attached to my furniture piece, so I don't need to strip it down. This paint, while it has a lot of texture, it's well adhered to this furniture piece. So I don't need to strip this piece down. I can go right over the top of it. So I cleaned it well um, with Dixie Belle White Lightning, gave it a really good cleaning. And then all I've done to the piece so far is I've got a single coat of Dixie Belle paint and driftwood. So, and I just went right over that existing texture. It's got tons of texture. Now, Sheila me... says that was one of her paint jobs over there. <laughs> oh, oh, oh yeah. Sheila, it is stunning. <laughs> no words. Absolutely no words. No, but really, no really, words. Really, I don't have any words for it. Um, so my inspiration for this, you guys, is this transfer here. It's so cool. This is it called... Looks like a skull with flowers it on does, it. It is a skull with flowers on it. So it actually has um, more than one piece. Can you guys see? This is the larger version, but it comes in multiple pieces, so I can hold this. So it's basically a larger version of this here, which is like a deer or a skull with the deer antlers and the flowers on it. I'm going to put this on my piece. Mm -hmm. This transfer is called Beautifully Native. It's by, um, it's by Redesign with Prima, and this is one of their newest transfers. So, but when I look at this image here, I feel like it's really rustic, very, um, I mean, I just feel like the, the finish needs to be kind of interesting. So, my plan 
I'm going to take, that's my assistant Ashton. I'm going to take, and this transfer is going to go on the middle of my piece when I'm done. But the finish I'm going to put underneath it is going to be a faux wood finish. It's going to look like a weathered wood underneath it. Lynn says your smile is gorgeous tonight. She must be oh, referring to me. Thank you. Well, you too. Oh, do you have the camera turned on selfie mode? <laughs> Just snapping <laughs> selfies. No big deal. Yeah. Leave me alone, woman. <laughs> Oh, you guys, we had some fun today. Sean started <laughs> working from home this week. Actually working. Wow. Yeah, yeah. it's entertaining. So, what I I'm mean, gonna... somebody else is paying me to stay home is what, what's going on. There. What I'm going to use is the Dixie Bell wood graining tool. And I'm opening up a brand new one. But I, um, I love this tool. So, when you get it in the package, it comes in these three pieces right here. Now, because the surface that I'm doing has a curve to it, I'm going to pop off this larger wood grading tool, and I want to use this smaller one. So I'm going to take this off of the handle. It just pops off with some effort. And we're not going to use that. We're going to use the smaller one tonight because I'm going to try to be writing a curve. Um, this will fit into the shape of my piece a little bit better. And then I can just pop this new one right on. Can you pop this on for me? Effortlessly. <laughs> yeah, effortlessly. <laughs> Pay no attention to what's going on behind the curtain. Um, well, the good thing about this is you don't have to worry about it falling off while you're actually using it. It has little pegs and you have to fit them into the plastic. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? It's like a guy with an instruction booklet. What instructions? <laughs> That's a tight right Just go ahead and make that work. I'm going to zoom in. Oh, there. Oh, there we go. It has little nooks. There we go. Okay. It's on. Um, and then it also comes with this little pie shape tool here, and you can use this for texture too. This I also like to use for cleaning out my wood grading tool because you can get it in between these crevices here, and it will help you clean it once you have paint. Or in our case, we're going to be using um, the Voodoo Gel Stain. So this is good for cleaning it too. I don't know if that's what it's made for, but that's what I like it for. So to get my faux wood finish, I'm going to be using Dixie Belle Voodoo Gel Stain. Um, and Voodoo Gel Stain is a water-based gel stain, so it goes on a little bit thinner. You can use this over the top of an existing finish, so I'm using it over the top of driftwood. Um, on my driftwood, I did put a single coat of, of gator hide. The reason for the gator hide is... We're going to be running our wood grading tool across the top and the raw paint is a little chalky and so once your uh, wood grading tool will start to kind of pull you'll get friction but that coat of gator hide helps it glide over the surface so it just goes easier so i've got a single coat of driftwood and then a single coat of um gator hide on there do i even want to know <laughs> she says did you just hit ash in the face when you threw that cardboard <laughs> Yeah, I did. <laughs> he's unconscious over the floor. On it's the no big floor deal. Right now, Sorry. But he's still breathing, I it's think. It's okay. Um, so the colors that I have out in my Voodoo Gel Stain, I've got White Magic. I've got Black Magic. So the good versus evil over there. I've got Up in Smoke, which is a gray. I have Temptress, which is this really pretty teal color. And then I have Tobacco Road, which is a brown. And I'm going to start, I'll start on this drawer here. I'm going to start by streaking these in on my piece. And I love these, um, the Voodoo gel stains, become, they come in this squeeze bottle here. So I can just squeeze it right off onto my surface and make it kind of streaky. And I'm gonna put in some, that was Tobacco Road. This is Black Magic. Woman. What? I messed it up? No, I said woman. You said black magic. I said woman. Come on. Um, you guys, I just got home from Ontario, California this week, and we did the um, redesign with Dixie Bell workshop on Saturday and Sunday. Whoa. Hello. That's that one so needs liquid. to be stirred or oh. shaken. Shake these well before you use them, guys. Um, they are liquidy, and you can actually feel like they kind of settle towards the bottom. I'm going to wipe that little spot. Baby, that's exactly what I need. Good job. Can you get it off my piece right there? You better be getting a raise, Ashley. I told him I would, um, for being my assistant and doing exactly stuff like this, he could make a few dollars on my lives. 
I'm going to streak in a little bit of this temptress and then let's do some up and smoke which is a gray color I love these names I'm going to do a little bit more of the tobacco road because I do want my dominant color to be the browns because my base is gray my base is a driftwood which is a gray color and so that'll give me some contrast and then I'm going to take my Dixie Belle brush this is a dry brush this is the Dixie Belle mini and I'm going to brush these all together so what was your base coat my base coat is Dixie Belle driftwood that's pretty already and I can, as I'm brushing these together, I can kind of get an idea, okay, I really want more of the gray, I got a little too much brown, whatever it is, whatever look it is I want. So I feel like I want a little bit more gray in there. So I'm going to streak in a little bit more of my gray. Why and do then... you rub it against the piece? And I'm going to brush these all together till they're just one kind of soupy mess. Cause if you think about weathered wood, we're doing kind of a weathered wood look. It's not super streaky, but if you look at it, you can see all the different colors that are in there. So now I'm gonna take my wood graining tool and I'm gonna start at one end of my piece. And with some pressure, I got my finger on here, I'm gonna give it some pressure and I'm gonna pull it. And as I pull it, I'm gonna rock it a little bit. And you'll kind of get a feel for where you rock it. We'll give it some of those knots. Do you see the knots? And then places that I kind of missed, I can go back or that didn't get on the curve. I can go back and just give my graining tool a different position and I can get those. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is a faux finish. I just want to give this some texture. And then I'm going to start at the other end and I'm going to do the same thing. Give it some pressure. I want to kind of line it up to the bottom of my other one. And I'm going to pull it and rock it. That's not doing so well. But that's okay because I'm on a curve right now. So as long as I'm getting some of that texture in there, it doesn't have to be perfect. I can reposition it and then drag it again. So same thing. I'm going to start down here with some pressure. good point if you drag it if you rock it slower as you pull you get longer lines it's just the yeah you can really control ideally a, a flat surface is much easier to use this on but when I get this drawer done I think you'll kind of see the direction I'm going my voodoo is kind of starting to dry a little bit so I'm gonna go a little bit faster Let me turn this so I can get this side better. Huh, 360 people. Closest friends. Family members. So where I feel like I just missed a little spot, I can go back and get those. So let me put this store in my piece so you can kind of see. Let's see, which one is this? This is my middle door. Yeah. where we're going with it. and then once I do I'll do these pieces here in between but it looks like a rough rustic wood full of imperfections I got a little bit of grain in here but that will make sense that I've got texture under my paint and there is there's texture underneath there from that really horrible finish so let's go ahead and do this next drawer right here this is just another drawer same thing I'm going to streak in my Voodoo gel stains. So when you've got a piece that's got existing texture, 
or you need to cover a flaw, um, you know, whatever that flaw may be, I will use a textured finish to do that. And this is just one textured finish. So that other one, I think I might do this one with a raised stencil on it as my texture. I'm gonna throw a little bit of white into this one. Man, your helper is like he's after a union job. <laughs> yeah. Until he gets one. And then I'm gonna brush these together. Okay, if these start to dry too fast because they're water-based, you can um, spritz it with a little bit of water and that will help your voodoo's not set up so fast. Now, same thing. And you guys, this will pivot on the head right here. So if I want a different green pattern, I can run it the other way by pivoting it. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. Start at the top, a little bit of pressure. Oh, Sheila, don't ask such crazy questions. Where are the ki other kids? If I only knew. If I only knew. Yes, Melinda, this is a texture to cover the other texture that we don't like. Yeah, my existing paint finish had a lot of texture in it. It was not a good finish. And so this does have a little bit of texture in it, but that it makes sense because it's a faux wood texture. It's very rough, very rustic. It's very imperfect. Um, it makes sense with the transfer that I'm putting on. It is more challenging because I'm working on a curved front. Ideally, this would be a flat front drawer. Because I'm on a curve, and this drawer has a different curve than the one above it. Yeah, so another couple options would be, it also has these texture tools here on the end. I'm going to try those and see if those work. Yeah, I don't care for those as much, so I'm going to keep trying to rock it. It'll just be catching in really thin lines, and that's now, okay. Now, is this an exclusive Dixie Bell tool? Um, Dix, this is carried by Dixie Bell. Yes, you can get this on the link that I have above in my post. There we go. I'm just having to reposition it a lot more to get on that curve than I normally would on a flat top. I think the look still works for my overall. Let me pick this up. This is my bottom drawer. Okay, so I do need to do these thin pieces in between here. I got one more drawer to do. You guys want to do one more? Yeah. But I like it. I think it looks like um with the curve of the drawer, it looks like a, like a log, huh? So if that? you were going to basically uh, not have the wood grain tool, but put the voodoo stain on, blend it, you could seal it, correct? Yeah, you absolutely can. So I'll do what you're saying right here. Well, we can leave it there. I streak in my voodoo gel stain. That's more brown than green. That's the brown one. That's Tobacco Road. Let's put some black magic in there. Um, and, and they don't all have to be the same. I actually like them all a little bit different. This is my white magic. And then I think the teal is kind of fun. It's just as little peaks of the um, temptress. I think we'll be really pretty with my transfer. And then I just brush through them. You've been using the same brush, right? Yeah, one brush. I mean, even that's kind of pretty right there. So absolutely, if you wanted to let this dry, this finish right here, you could let that dry and that would that could definitely be your finish too. 
So your base coat, you paint it on, let it dry, and then you're coming at this, right? Yeah, and then I have a coat of um, of um, Dixie Belle Gator Hide on there too. And that just helps the wood graining tool to slide a little bit easier over the surface. Not, not really to seal my paint. All right, Melinda, this is for you. Okay, so this is placing my wood graining tool. Pull and draw up. So let's see if I can get a better placement. Yeah, see, I'm on the, I'm on a curve, you guys. If this was a flat surface. You're gonna get much better wood grain. You can rock it as much or as little as you want. And then places I missed, like right here, I'll just come back and I can write it again. I knew this would be a little bit of an experiment going on a curved front like this because it's a flat tool. But I I like the look. See how it just is making really skinny lines and I just have to keep... Hey, here, I'm gonna zoom on the piece so they can actually see because it just looks like it's, sorry for the finger, like it's curved this way, but you can actually see coming from the side that it's also curved down this way. So that's what's uh, causing some of the problem. And I don't think it's a problem. I think it's just, I just have to place my wood graining tool and it's going to make the lines a lot thinner than it would if I was on a flat surface. And it's making these thin lines in there, but I, I still like it. I still like the look of it. It still gives that wood grain look. And, and that transfer is very bohemian. So I feel like even if this is more of a bohemian look, a, you know, artistic interpretation of a wood grain, it totally makes sense with that transfer. Top of the drawer is a little more curved. Rock it out. I can show you guys on the top too. Oh, shut it. Sheila, is it really your birthday? Is it? She said, oh, I forgot. Today's my birthday. I'll wait for Brandy to sing to me. You guys, do you want to sing happy birthday to Sheila? Oh, this is going to be bad. Ready? You want to sing happy no. birthday, Ashton? Yeah, somebody, don't just leave me. Don't let me go solo. <clears throat> don't do me like that. Yeah, clear your voice. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sheila. Happy birthday to you. That's cool. That one's a little more, got a little more black in it. I might redo that drawer, actually. It needs more brown so that yeah. it's more consistent. That's a really cool but look. But I do like the look of it. Matt. That's a really cool look. But I want it consistent with these down here. It looks like trees. So, you guys want to fix that with me? No. Here's how I would fix my boo boo gel stain. Yes, I just went through that with the rocking tool and it took time, but I'm going to add some water to it. Then, come back, brush it back out. It's not dry yet, so I can still come back and brush it all back out. I'm going to take a little bit of it off and add more brown in there. That's kind of a cool look too. That's just wiping through with a paper towel. We're all about experimenting here at Brush by Brandy. That's a really cool look too. So the tool is in your link? Yes, um, my link is to Dixville Paint to their website. And where's that transfer again? Let's see the transfer. Yeah. The bam. So this is my transfer. So imagine when all the front is kind of covered in this wood look finish. I think it's going to be very, it's going to go with this bohemian looking transfer. So that's my image guys. Very rustic. It's got the browns in it. So this is a really cool look right here too. Here's your paper logo. Yeah, it's really pretty. You could let it dry like this. <laughs> the new paper towel tool. That was a slick one. <laughs> yeah, that's also available at DixieBell.com. Made by Brawny. You mean made by Brawny? 
Oh, no, I'm gonna um, lay my brush off a little bit because it's got all that black in there. There we go. So I added in a little bit more brown. I don't want to totally get rid of the black, but that evened it out a little bit. And now I think when I run my graining tool through it again, it will have the right colors. <laughs> That corner looks just like our coffee table right now. It's hard to like bent up. Yeah, you can tell the spots that are more flat than others. I get a better run. You could make this heavier on the gray, heavier on the brown, the black, whatever color you want it to be heavier on. I've kind of got more brown in here. So your gel stains? Yes. Which kind? What These colors? These are um, Dixie Belle Voodoo gel stains and I've got Black Magic, White Magic, Temptress, which is the teal. Up in smoke is gray, and then tobacco road is my brown. Ashton, you're really showing me up. I'm really attentive, Why you're on it. Oh no. You could also go down like this if you wanted to get some horizontal lines in there curve is really kind of a pain. This tool's great on flat surfaces. I'm going to do the top so I can show you what I mean. I'm still getting the overall look that I want. It's just taking a lot more work. Okay, let's try that and see if that's a better match. Be a little heavy right here. Oh, that's green. Right. Yeah, I feel like that's a better I think that's match. Better. And then with it, once I do the centers here, um, it really makes sense. Do you guys want to do the top and see it work on a flat surface? I think that'll help you guys really of get course. an image of what how the grain tool works on a flat surface. Let me move all my stuff out of the way. Oh, you're always in the way. Yeah, mom, stuff's always in the way. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna streak in my voodoo's. Totally randomly. But knowing that I want to go a little heavier on the brown. So that was Tobacco Road. This is the gray, the up in smoke. Uh -huh. Do a little bit of black magic. The black magic. Um, a little bit goes a long way, so I'm not going to put much of that in. And then the temptress, which I just want to peek in here and there. Okay, I like the white too. So this is this is all five, right? Yeah, that's all five of the colors I got out. That look crazy enough. It looks a little bit '90s. And then I'm going to brush these together. This is a longer stretch here. And so I feel it getting a little sticky. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water. 
because I don't want these drying yet. I need to run that tool through it. I also have a lot of texture and the water helps it get down into that texture. That's the orange peel from the somebody putting paint on with a roller. Oh my. Hey Ashton, what's that tool you're holding? No, I won't. You gotta let me see it. Let me see it. What is it? The greener. The Dixie Bell wood green tool. <laughs> oh, Dad. I want to make sure I get this all covered. I'm keeping it wet. And I can see right now that I feel like I'm going to want more brown in this. So I'm going to put a little bit more brown in because that's kind of the dominant color that I've got on the front. And I do want to make sure that this coordinates. My containers are getting a little empty. Okay, I'm going to cover up some of these areas that may be a little strong on the other colors. Making sure it's still wet because I still have to run my graining tool through it. So keep this wet, you guys. Okay, I feel like that's a little bit better combo. So now I'm going to come back with my graining tool. And just like we did on the front, only now I've got a flat surface, although it does have that texture in it. So I'm going to run right up to the edge. And then I'm going to start at this end. I'm going to pull a little bit of pressure and drag it. This is a large flat surface. So for this one, if I didn't have the front that had the smaller grading tool, I would use the larger one on this top. You can have, add as many knots as you want. So if I do more pull and less rock, I'm going to get less knots. Well, I don't really want these lines in between, so I'm going to come and kind of fade them out a little bit. I want to move kind of quickly because I don't want my voodoo setting up and I need to get all the way to the back of my piece. It starts getting a little gunked up in the tool, so I can wipe this out with a paper towel. Um, why is this so thick right there? Uh, it's got a little te texture. Has mm -hmm. whoever painted it before mm -hmm. got a gob of paint right there? Oh no. Right, Ashton? What? Isn't it? Barely any rock to it. Is a little more subtle look the more the more you rock it if you go all the way front to back you're gonna get so this is a very faux finish I wouldn't say this looks like real wood but it's very exaggerated mm -hmm. 
more than anything, it's perfect for having texture underneath my paint. And then on the face of my piece where, no, 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 please don't. Where I've got this lip right here, I'm gonna make this match. Let me show you what I'll do to it. So because this is a faux finish, I just need to make it all the way down this lip. So same thing, I've kind of brushed on the soupy mess of my voodoo. I'm going to take and I'm just going to kind of brush it. I'm just using a paper towel to lay off some spots so it looks like it coordinates with the top. So I can use, I'm just using the paper towel to faux finish that and make it match the texture that's around the top. And you can use a brush if you've got little spots that you need to get into. So I think it's kind of cool. It's a little bit funky, a little bit different, but I think it'll be really cool with that transfer on it. It's going to look like an old rough rustic. And I'm going to do all this here. I will faux finish these and I'm going to run the grain tool on the sides. So I'm going to finish this up and I will get this one done and pictures out to you guys. But that's the wood graining tool in action for more of a really like bohemian faux wood finish um, and great for going over a textured piece um, and giving good texture to your bad texture. So um, you guys, thank you so much. Have a great Thursday. I will see you guys here live next Thursday. Go follow my page at Brushed by Brandy. Um, have a great weekend.